Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel Trading Secrets. This channel is for entertainment purposes only. For those of you who don't know, my name is Ali. I have over 20 years experience teaching accounting, economics, business and law through this channel. I'll be providing some stock analysis and a quick update on the million dollar challenge. So if anybody's not aware of this, this is a genuine investment of $1,000 to a return of $1 million over a period of three years using a strategy called compound return investing. So the objective is to try to get 201 trades. Each has an average return of 3.5%. It's not 201 consecutive trades. We do take into account losses. So for further details about how to join us for less than $9 a month, information is available in the description below. In today's video, we're going to be looking at more asset sales from Nextbridge Hydrocarbons reported from the NAEP convention. We're also going to look at the latest from DC in terms of Don's visit and all the bookings that he has and what is currently left available. And uh, there also has been a significant development with Tixamal DJT Trump Media. And they have uh, just released a second letter to Congress looking at an requesting an investigation and potential resolution, which potentially also could have a positive impact for MMTLP. So we'll watch that carefully. So before we get started, let's have a look at what's happening in the market. So the stock markets in terms of today from Yahoo Finance, we can see the stocks are going up as the Fed rate uh, hike fears are fading. And we're also um, expecting Apple earnings um, very, very shortly at time of editing. So let's have a look at the heat map for close of play today. Uh, we can see again, uh, tech is uh, overall finished in green, communication services uh, green. Uh, healthcare is a little bit more mixed and uh, good recovery there in energy but overall not too bad a day in the market so let's have a look at uh, in terms of the market news the statement from the Fed uh, and five key implications so first of all the Fed did keep uh, interest rates unchanged at 5.5 percent and the sixth meeting in a row that they have left them unchanged so they have signaled that rates could uh, likely remain higher for longer than previously expected however I think the markets were also potentially looking at a, a cut maybe as early as November, but we'll have to see. And uh, we can see in recent months, there has been a lack of progress towards the committee's 2% inflation objective. We are a little bit far, far away from that, uh, but uh, what, uh, it was a positive thing that the policymakers stressed that they do, do not see rate cuts happening until they are confident that inflation is nearing 2%. And that statement also supports the view that rate cuts are not happening anytime soon, but obviously it is a fluid situation and anything could change. Uh, and finally, a headline here from CNBC, we can see the hedge funds are dead as doornails, says the chairman of ultra rich investors club Tiger 21. So, so this is interesting. So this is an article from April the 30th, 2024. So certainly across the markets, I think there is more pressure on hedge funds, short sellers. And we can see here Tiger 21 members allocation to hedge funds dropped 2% from 12%. So uh, looks like could be less confidence in the work of the hedge funds and currently private equity takes up the largest allocation of Tiger 21 members. Uh, portfolio 29% and it states here our members realise they could do better on average with more exposure to the index with more liquidity and less fees high returns over the decade so uh, potentially not a good future there for the hedge funds. So I am now able to share some reported earnings from Apple so overall this looks like a significant beat so let's have a look at the key headlines so first of all they have exceeded the share buyback expectations with a new 110 billion dollar buyback pro program beating the expectation of a 90 billion dollar program. Uh, so the key headline in terms of revenue we're looking at 90.8 billion dollars versus the estimated $90.5 billion, and that's a beat. And then we're also looking at the earnings per share of $1.53 compared to the estimated $1.50. So uh, a significant beat there, but let's have a look at a breakdown in terms of the highlights. So we've seen the uh, earnings per share beat and the revenue beat. If we look at China, so greater China sales, we're looking at 16.37 billion uh, versus the estimated six, uh, 15 point eight five billion dollars so again a beat there a hundred ten billion dollar buyback plus a four percent dividend increase again great news for all uh, investors and shareholders there so in terms of the segment a breakdown iphone revenue again a beat 45.96 billion versus 45.76 billion service revenue a, a, a beat mac revenue a beat ipad revenue a beat and wearable home accessories also a beat so tremendous news there for apple Let's have a look at the reported asset sales from Nate Convention for Nextbridge Hydrocarbons and what the bird lady has posted earlier is that it looks like Nextbridge Hydrocarbons had several sales 
from NAEP. Uh, so let's have a look at the FAQ section where this has been reported. So under the first of all, under the question, what are the future plans for the company? So again, in terms of the assets, they have stated uh, for everyone to get the latest developments to sign up for the newsletter. So go ahead and do that if you wish to do so. Well, let's now focus on the current plans to sell their assets. What they have stated under this question is they obviously can, they are continuing to explore all potential avenues to maximize the value of the Oro Grande assets and other assets for the benefit of shareholders, investors out there um, who are obviously currently in excess of 65,000. And it states here, currently in terms of uh, looking at the most recent sales, they've stated here that from the NIT 2024 NIT convention, uh, that the result, the results and sales of several properties were we owned in uh, took place. So again, uh, positive news there. However, I think uh, the the real sale that we are looking at is for the whole Ori Grande assets, where we're looking at obviously the significant assets of oil. So that is yet to come. Uh, but let's have a look at in terms of uh, the latest developments for uh, Congress and DC. So shout out here to De uh, Jen, who stated two days left to schedule. Uh, and here is the update for the schedule for Don in um, uh, in DC. And we uh, basically the message is to call your rep. So Monday, the May the 6th, uh, we have um, five slots booked. And I think there are four slots available. Tuesday, we'll, we also have four uh, slot, five slots available, 9, 11, 12, 1 and 4. Wednesday, there is all, there are only two slots available. Thursday, we're looking at four slots available. And Friday, uh, between 12 and 4 is also available. So uh, hopefully we can get Don fully booked in all of these. Let's have a look at the follow-up and second letter to Congress from DJT. Uh, this is from Devin Nunes, who is the CEO of Trump Media. So uh, we can see here what Kristen has stated is that another letter from Devin Nunes to Congress, congressional leaders asking for an investigation into stock manipulation. He is rec requesting testimony and records from additional companies. So certainly very interesting. She also goes in on to say, uh, quoting from the letter, as noted in the previous letter, I believe quick action is necessary. So uh, those are the words from Devin Nunes. But well, let's have a look at the actual letter. We can see here dated May the 1st. Again, he's tagging in and uh, copying in uh, Jim Jordan, Patrick McHenry from the uh, Committee on Financial Services, uh, James Comer from the Committee on Oversight and Reform, and also Jason Smith. So uh, in terms of the letter, he's again uh, confirming here that this is a follow-up letter to the letter dated April the 23rd, 2024, and it is regarding potential manipulation of the stock uh, DJT. So uh, this is for Trump Media and Technology Group. Uh, and he states here in the message to Congress that the SEC uh, generally prohibits a broker deal from accepting a short sale in any equity security unless the broker has borrowed the security entered into a bona fide uh, arrangement to borrow on reasonable grounds uh, the security on reasonable grounds and believes that security can be borrowed so it can be delivered on the date that it is due. So obviously looks like the implication here is that that is not happening. And he goes on to say to support reasonable grounds, a locate must be made and documented prior to affecting the short sale. So he's basically saying here, these are the rules. Why are they not being followed? And this certainly seems to be suspicious. So he stated here that DJT has continuously remained on the NASDAQ SHO threshold list since April the 2nd, 2024. And appearance on this list results from persistent settlement failures. So these settlement failures are from obviously the, the short sellers, the hedge funds, uh, and the people who are not um, closing their positions. And it states here is triggers heightened responsibilities for market participants. And uh, the guidance clearly states that the only way to establish reasonable grounds for short sales is for the broker dealers to uh, obviously borrow the security. Moreover, the broker dealer may not reapply a, a locate for intraday to buy uh, to cover trades. And in the final part of the letter, we can see uh, quite importantly, what he's, Devin has also stated is that TMTG uh, has un identified ongoing anomalies in DJT trading. So th they have certainly uncovered something. They, I'm assuming they have sent that to the SEC, but without any satisfactory response. So hence this letter to Congress. Uh, and it states also to assist in determining whether or not the intraday short sales of DJT are being approved in violation 
uh, of the SEC rules, we would encourage you to seek documents and testimony from the firms identified below, including um, the DTC members uh, that facilitate short sales, including the following. So these include Apex Clearing, Clear Street, Trade Pro, Velocity Clearing, and um, amongst a few others, and finishes off by saying, in addition, uh, they're asking for records and information related to trading in DJT. So again, very, very similar parallels with MMTLP, because obviously Congress do have the power of a subpoena um, and uh, the SEC must report back to them with any um, obviously allegations of wrongdoing that the Congress may make. And they also state say that they're looking for rele relevant documents, including compliance policies and also policies that condone the application of a multiplier to facilitate the lender of more shares than are actually available, hence the allegation of synthetic shares. And finally, it states here, he believes that quick action is necessary. So good luck with that, Devin Nunes. I don't think there is such a thing as quick action from Congress, uh, but that's what you're asking for. Let's see if you get that. Uh, and he's saying it's necessary to protect retail shareholders, identify wrongdoers, and determine whether any laws, including RICO, uh, statutes and tax evasion laws have been violated. Again, all of these, uh, again, identified as examples of strong parallels with MMTLP. So let's see if we're, there is a, a response or even a positive response. Unfortunately, I don't think there's going to be a quick response from Congress, uh, but certainly this is getting much, much more interesting now. And finally, if you'd like to join us in our Discord and get access to Research DD, uh, share live trading news and also get access to our daily stock alerts as well as the weekly watch list, uh, details are in the description below. Thank you very much for watching. Please stay tuned.